I'm out for a walk today over my lunch break. It's early July. Most people, unless you're a wildlife manager or a deer nut, probably aren't thinking all that much about white-tailed deer this time of year. But it's a really important time of the year for this species from a nutritional standpoint. Does are lactating, they're raising fawns, bucks are in velvet, they're actively growing antlers. And we're very lucky in Kansas to have the diversity of different food sources, both from a native standpoint in our rangelands and in our woodlands, and also the crops that our agricultural producers grow uh, for their livelihood. So there's lots of different food sources out there. Our deer really don't need supplemental feeding at this time of the year like they do in some areas to promote fawn survival and antler growth and that sort of thing. And so when I'm out for walks and that, that type of thing this time of year, maybe I'm fishing, I like to pay attention to what the deer are eating in the different areas I'm in. And then I can kind of get an idea of what plants I might want to promote or at least not discourage when I'm managing for white-tailed deer. And one of the things that we can do is what we call a browse survey. So just while I'm out walking around, I look at the plants, look for the signs that tell me that a deer took a bite from that plant. And then I know that species is something that a deer ate from. Many of you may be saying, well, how in the world do I know what a deer took a bite from? And I'm gonna show you. So if we look at this vine right here, this is green briar. Green briar is a high protein, easily digestible woody vine that deer are known to eat throughout their range, and, and I should say white-tailed deer. And if we look at this green briar, we can see on this stem that it's been broken off and it's sort of a tear. It's a rough cut or a rough tear. It's not a nice even break. And what that's showing us is that a white-tailed deer, because they don't have upper incisors, grab that vine and with a combination of their lower incisors, their tongue, and probably their upper gums, tore that plant off. So if you're interested in deer or just interested in wildlife in general and learning about the different things that they eat, next time you're out fishing or going for a walk or just being outside, take a plant identification guide with you, do an informal browse survey, and learn more about the environment around you.